I'm here with security researcher Tal Baeri. He's part of the group that helped uncover this Windows 10 security flaw. Tal, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. So I reached out, um, Tal, to Microsoft today, and they say, listen, they're aware of this issue. They already issued a patch to address it. So, so bottom line this for me. Um, how worried should the many Windows fans listening to this right now really be about this security flaw? Well, uh, I think that everything that Microsoft said is true. Uh, we're a responsible researcher, we're responsibly disclosed, and they right away patched most of the issues, and some issues are not patched yet, but they're in the pipeline and will be patched. But I think it kind of shows uh, uh, the bigger problem, and where is, uh, it's like the smoke, and there's some more fire there. And we think that although, you know, nobody should wear tinfoil hats to protect against that, and we should take it into perspective, but I think for people that use their computer for uh, important things such as corporate and so on, I think they need to reconsider using Cortana, and especially using Cortana while the computer is locked. Interesting, and, so, and, and by the way, we're, you say that maybe we should rethink using Cortana. Mm -hmm. What about the other digital assistants? Because we talk a lot about Siri, about Google Assistant, Alexa. Should they rethink using those as well? Are you, are you equally concerned about vulnerabilities there? Well, I think what is special, uh, special case in Cortana uh, case that they were uh, injected into existing environment because we have Windows like the, for the last 30 years and all of a sudden we add some uh, new interface and when introducing such an innovative concept into existing environment, uh, this is really risky. So kind of Alexa is a new interface for new environment. So it does not have as big of attack surface and uh, Alexa is relatively a dedicated thing. Having said that, it's just a reduced attack surface and we think that uh, similar vulnerabilities can be found there and in Siri, especially if Siri is uh, integrated into Mac, so it's, it, it's not related specifically to Microsoft and their practices. It's something more general than that. So feel. this is just a general problem. These new interfaces mean new vulnerabilities. Exactly. Some might listen to this, um, Tom, and they may say, listen, it sounds like what you needed, though, to make this work is physical access to the actual target PC. Mm -hmm. And if that's true, that sounds like it's kind of limiting. Is that, is that how to think about it? So indeed, the initial attack was uh, with the physical access. And we need to consider that physical access is still relevant because each time, for example, uh, you lock your computer uh, at work and go to a break or to a meeting or so on, so your computer is uh, physically accessible by other uh, people. So we, we don't need to underestimate the physical access uh, threat vector, but we think and we will show in our uh, presentation that there are all kind of remote variants that attack, for example, using the remote desktop protocol, which enables users to connect remotely, they can also remotely send uh, voice commands. So there are uh, also remote vectors to that wow. and remote yeah. vulnerabilities. Amazing. So more, uh, more news on the way, Tal, from yeah. you. Thank you so much for joining us today.